G'day, my name's Rob. Welcome to another episode of Skins Golf TV. Uh, we're out here today, we're at Spencer's place. He's got a new installation here. So he's got an indoor sim and he's got himself a new putting green. So tonight we're gonna be looking at comparing the different irons, the M6 and the M5. We're gonna see how they go. Hey Spencer, you ready to go, mate? Just getting my 100th pint of row in, mate, from 10 <laughs> yards. On my new pine green. <laughs> you saw that go in, right? Yeah. M5 versus M6. M5 versus M6, mate. You ready to rumble? Let's do it. Okay, let's go. All right. Welcome to my new golf zone at my villa. I've got this <laughs> cool new setup in my gym. You already saw the little putting zone out there. And I've built this simulator, which I'm gonna do another video uh, later on when the actual sim arrives, because I'm waiting for the GC quad to come through uh, Indonesian customs, which is really annoying. Uh, but tonight, Rob has kindly brought over his uh, track man so we can compare the M6 and the M5s. My new clubs are my old clubs, and why I bought them, basically. So from the M6 to the M5, right? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Very cool. So should we talk a little bit about the technical specs? Okay, so basically, when you're having a look at the difference in what we've got between the M5 and the M6, uh, there's very subtle differences actually. TaylorMade, they've done a really good job in the past of being able to insert this speed pocket into all of their clubs between their four iron and their seven iron, which have been really good. But in this model, in between the M5 and the M6, this is uh, the cool thing that they've added to these ones, is that they've added in the speed bridge and it's offering a lot more face support uh, into the actual golf club. So that when you hit it into, in the sweet spot, it really feels a lot more solid in the face. Um, the M5, I believe, has a little bit of a thinner face uh, to give a little bit more feel. But in general, both of them are designed towards creating a lot more speed. So they got the speed pocket, they got the speed bridge, you know, everything's speed, speed, speed. So everything's about designing the golf club to act a little bit faster. But I guess the subtle differences are is, this one, the M5, is a little bit more designed towards the more elite player, or let's say the mid handicapper to the lower handicapper, where the M6 kind of goes towards the higher handicappers. Now, when you have a look at it, uh, I've had a little bit of a sticky beak at both of these side by side, and the top edge of the M5 actually looks a little bit more thinner, and it, you know, to me, that's you know more of a player's signature. You know, as a lower handicap player, that's what you want to see. You don't want to see a big, you know, chunky thing on top of your golf club. Whereas uh, when you look at the bottom of the golf club as well, it also has a thinner sole. So I definitely think that the M5 uh, looks a little bit more like a player's iron as as compared to the M6, which is definitely the you know the true game improvement iron. It's a big face, isn't yes, it? Yes, the there? big face on there. Yeah. Now, both of them they have a fair bit of similar technology, but I think that this one they're trying to make you feel a little bit better, you know, when you're using it. Now. One of the things that I also heard about this one is that uh, the lofts are a little bit higher, a little bit more standard, whereas the M6 is a little, still has a lot of uh, de-lofted golf clubs to make you feel like you're hitting it further. So the M5 also has that traditional feel in terms of you know, your trajectory out of the ball flight. That one is a 28.5 and this one is a 30 degrees. There you go. So, so for your seven irons, we're going to be comparing seven irons today, so this is what we're going to look at. Okay, um, so l let me talk a little bit about why I bought them. Yep. Um, obviously all those technical details you talked about. Um, but I, actually, to be honest, I kind of felt like it was more to do with a mental aspect for my game. You know, <laughs> I feel like I'm improving at golf. I don't want to be playing with uh, like a stick that's kind of designed towards a mid handicapper. I want to be like, oh, I'm a single handicapper now. You know, I'm yeah, really right. striving towards getting towards scratch. So I need to be playing with these better clubs. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know if that's the right decision or not, but yeah, right. I'm hoping that that mental aspect is actually going to help me because obviously golf is a, is a mental game. It's all about that, that belief in being able to hit it straight and pure. Absolutely. Um, and I think a lot of the, the features you talked about, like the, the big one for me was um, you can see the edge here. This has got a beveled edge, right? Enabling me to slightly hit down more on the ball and, and hit the ball more in the, in the sweet spot of the club. Yeah, I missed explaining that. Yeah, yeah, on the leading edge here on the M5, it does seem to have like that little bit of an edge that they cut out, you know, to add a little bit more bounce. So basically when you- Less bounce, isn't uh, it? 
Yeah, so that when you strike into the into the ground, you know, you're not taking as big of a divot, so it is gonna come through. Mm -hmm. It'll be nice. Is that more can, bounce or less bounce? It's a little bit more bounce, and then this one, it yeah. has the, the edge, it's not cut off, so yeah. basically if you dig into the ground with this one, this is gonna take a divot. This yep. one you can press forward a little bit harder. Yep. Mm. Okay, so should we hit some balls, get some numbers? Yeah, and absolutely. see what they do. Yep. Let's make that comparison. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. So you've hit a fair few of them, how do they feel out of the M6, if you're going to describe it? Well, I mean, this one I do feel like, I mean, I can hit it a long way. Yeah. It feels good, this is the one I'm used to, this is the one I've been playing. Okay, I think that's, that's enough 10. for that club. That's 10. That one's the M5. Okay. Okay. I'm a bit nervous now that I'm not going to be able to hit the M5 as well. Ooh. Oh, there's a bit of a pattern going on. I'm liking this, mate. <laughs> mm. I mean, they are as straight as it gets, aren't they? Yeah. That's a good shot there. Okay, some good numbers there. Rob, I've just hit, as you can see, 10 shots with each, each club. Talk me through the data. Okay, so if we have a look, at, uh, let's go over to uh, the different golf clubs, because there's something I want to point out here that I've seen uh, just a few moments ago. Um, you can see that the face angle on this one, this one was the uh, M6, wasn't it? So this one being the M6, we can see that the face angle was uh, an average of 0.4 positive, so slightly a bit open, and the club path was minus 2.8. But the face to path relationship average was 1.9. That's this one here. Yeah, Aperture. that's right. So I'm getting slight baby fades, so I'm happy with that. That's that's. I'm, I like that shot. Right on, right on. Now, if we have a look at the other data from the other golf club, the numbers of the face angle and the club path, they're slightly different, but you can see that the average face to path is 2.0 positive, so it's still that same fade. Yep. Now, I think that as you've moved from one club to another, because in, in uh, this setup, we didn't really have a target point on the, on the screen there. We basically just had a mark on the ground that we had calibrated to, right? So maybe you were just a little bit offset, and that's the reason why the face angle and the club path are offset like that, because you still ended up doing the same swing consistently across the board. Yeah, from these numbers, I'm doing a consistent swing, so I'm, yeah. So, looking at that, it's pretty good to see that across the board, that swing is looking pretty consistent, so that the rest of the numbers, we should be able to compare pretty successfully and be able to give some, you know, pretty good reviews on that. Okay. If you have a look at the total distance of uh, the M5, this one, you're at 198.8. Now, if we go back to total distance for the M6, it is 197.2. I mean, that's only one and a half degree, one and a half yards. So you're not really getting a massive change in that distance. Um, I've seen in the one with your M5s, you are getting uh, a few longer shots. Your longer shot for the M5 was definitely 204. That's a big smack too, by the way. And that smash factor of 1.4 for that shot, that's really come out hot. But the big difference is, it's only slightly longer, but the launch angle is the difference, isn't it? Absolutely. So when we're looking at uh, probably the reason why you're getting that little bit of extra distance is your launch angle on this one was 16.5 degrees and the average for the launch angle was 16.6, that's the M5. And then when we go over to the M6, 
you can see that the average launch angle was 15.3. A degree and a half down, that's quite a big percentage change. Exactly. Now, that's really interesting because you'd think an, a, a degree down would might make this club a little bit stronger. But obviously the tech inside the golf club has made it so that the higher launch angle is actually benefiting you. Because the spin rate reality is, is that's Almost exactly really, the, the average same. is, you know, 5,600, and then this one's 5,607. So like, you know, that spin rate average is almost exactly the same. So, you know, for that, we're not talking about significant differences in the numbers here too much, but exactly what TaylorMade have said, you know, that little bit of extra loft in the M5 compared to the lower loft in the uh, M6, you know, we're seeing that in the numbers directly there. Yeah. No, I felt, like I hit the, the M5 better. It felt like it was going straight in. I don't know whether that's got anything to do with the club. Um, but again, I, I, I think I'm gonna come back to this point of the reason why I bought these clubs to make me feel like I'm a better player. And when I'm, when I'm addressing the ball, it just feels a bit more finesse. I feel, I just feel like I'm, I'm supposed to hit the ball a bit better when, I, when I've got that slightly smaller club head. Yeah, right. You know, it makes me feel like I'm a bit more of a pro. Or you're, a bit more elite. you're a bit more elite today. Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously I've got a long way to go, but I, I'm feeling a little bit more, like I've improved my game and I'm, you know, I'm meant to be there on the golf course. So I, I think the reason why I bought this is actually a good reason now that I've, I've started playing with them. And now I've had a look at these numbers. Standing up over those shots, your first a uh, few shots that you hit with that club today, that M5, you've nailed them. I mean, you didn't hit one offline for the first four golf shots. So, you know, I like- I think it, the, one of the big differences might be if you're, if you're like a sort of a more mid to high handicapper, those M6s are gonna make a big difference for you because they do have that bigger sweet spot. So um, for me, maybe not so much of a difference because I'm able, I'm able to hit the ball in the you know, middle of the club most of the time. Um, so I'm not getting the benefits of what the M6 is meant to give to me, right? That's true. You know, like you're already at that stage where you're, you know, you're shooting, you're looking, you know, into the mid 70s, you know, if you shoot a great round or something like that. Those guys who have a little bit slower of a club speed probably will benefit a lot more from all of the different things, all the different stuff that's involved in the technology of the golf club. But overall, I think I've made the right choice. I think I really like these M5s. I'm going to use them for the next uh, five months until I throw one in the lake, I guess. <laughs> okay, on. My, so my M6 means... M5 is actually in the lake. <laughs> That's why, the reason what prompted me to buy a, um, buy a new set. <laughs> Thanks again for watching Skins Golf TV. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all the shizzle down below help us build this channel. And if you've got any requests, please fire them out to us. We love to you know, do the requests for you guys. So yeah, keep them firing out to us. And that's it for us today, isn't it? Keep them PG though. No dodgy requests, please. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, Skins Golf TV. Skins Golf TV, thanks.